Did you know that exploring your mind with psychedelics can fundamentally change how you see the world? If not, you'll learn in this episode. Welcome to a new episode of Entheogenic Renaissance. And in this episode, I will be talking about informed consent. As you know, I'm going through an education program on psychedelic assisted coaching. And during one of the meetings that we've had during last week, we've been talking about a particular case of a person who wanted to get to know psychedelics and change something in their life. And we started the conversation and among one of the questions was, how do you prepare a person for a psychedelic experience? And while I have a lot of knowledge that I possess around that topic, there is one particular article that I wanted to talk to you about. That article is dedicated to seven elements of informed consent. And it is written, let me read because I don't remember how to pronounce it properly, by Mason Marks, Rebecca Brendel, Carmel Shachar, Glenn Cohen. I hope I pronounced them correctly. It was published in JAMA magazine uh, for psychiatry, one of the top uh, journals on that topic. And the... Sorry, my, my dog demands attention. So why am I talking about consent? Because whenever you're going for medical evaluation, whenever you're going for a blood test, for instance, you're typically signing a form saying that you understand what is going to happen, what the procedure is going to be like, and that they will, you know, make a hole in your body and get blood out of it. But with psychedelics, things are slightly more nuanced because they alter mind, they alter world perception, and they shatter mental structures. And that could be quite horrifying for many people, but for some it could even last to a sustainable negative uh, consequences. So today you can find websites where which gather information about various so-called uh, psychedelic retreats that are happening all over the world in europe in americas even in asian countries and those retreats serve various types of substances whether those are legal like in netherlands psilocybin truffles or less legal that are happening in other locations like ayahuasca iboga and other you don't really know how well are they preparing their clients for the first encounter with the substances. And the substance experience, or psychedelic experience rather, can be quite challenging. Not all the times, not necessarily. Of course, if you're having an unresolved trauma or some other type of mental illness, it could be quite detrimental. Well, definitely not lethal, definitely not that bad. Nothing that cannot be fixed but the experience may be quite challenging. So even in the clinical trials that are happening all over the world, for instance, in the Compass Pathways trials, three out of 79 people had declared that they've faced the worsening of their perception, the worsening of the symptoms and the suicidal intensification of suicidal thoughts. One in 14 Six people in MAPS trial also reported the negative consequences after the consumption of psychedelics within the clinical trial, within the clinical context, etc. So there are things that people may get in touch with that are quite problematic. There are things that are very unusual and it is important to inform people up front before they encounter with the substances for the first time. Because not all people go through clinical trials, not all people go through therapeutic context because in the majority of cases, unfortunately, it is still illegal. That's why there is a lot of underground work happening. And of course, people are consuming psychedelics recreationally, which, you know, is kind of prohibited, but people still do it. I don't advocate for the use of psychedelics, of course, although if it is legal, if it is safe, why the hell not? Especially if all safety measures are taken in place. If it's your own body, your own soul, you're not hurting anybody, it's your decision after all, but just make sure you don't break any laws or don't try to test gravity, <laughs> for instance. Make sure to find a seater if you're having a psychedelic experience. But I'm not gonna talk about it, let's go to the article and the things that are described there, namely seven elements or I'd prefer to call them seven pillars. So let me go through them one by one. 
First one would be acute and chronic perception changes, and those could lead to either worsening of anxiety or changes in perception around some specific concepts or behavioral patterns or generally shattering of the worldview. And it sounds quite horrifying, but it is true because in theogens they are dissolving ego, they are dissolving boundaries, they are dissolving protective mechanisms and everything that is happening with one's psyche is eventually leading towards a perception change because you get a new perspective and the same knowledge, so to speak. Second pillar would be personality change and altered metaphysical beliefs. This is more interesting. So when it comes to personality changes, it could be uh, something around change of attitudes towards your own addiction, for instance, or substance use disorder or uh, consumption of uh, substances like nicotine or alcohol or something like that but when we're talking about metaphysical beliefs this is like more serious in a sense because people may find faith people may start to question their faith even or people may feel that there is some magical feeling of interconnectedness that they cannot explain and that leads them to become slightly more open to spiritual practices let's put it this way not necessarily of course but the metaphysical fabric of reality is shattered pretty much so there are no like known radical adverse effects there but you may start to question the beliefs with which you've been living for the duration of your entire life so be prepared for that role of physical touch this is a very controversial topic because depending on who you ask especially in the underground community there will be people telling you that physical touch is critical the somatic element is important and that you know people may get benefit from an hug or like supportive touch on the pat on the shoulder or something like that however whenever we are talking about the clinical trials touch may not be appropriate moreover ideally since things that can be implemented are especially if we're talking about group facilitation are the stickers like red yellow or green something like that where each in the every color would signify the willingness or readiness for a person to be touched because again it should it should be consensual otherwise it can harm people moreover people with trauma can re-experience trauma if they're being touched by a therapist who is just trying to support them but that person may relieve a very traumatic experience from their childhood so the topic of touch should be discussed up front of course prior to the consumption of psychedelic substances exploitation and abuse and this is a topic that is happening from time to time not often but people are more susceptible to ideas people are more susceptible to being manipulated under the influence of entheogens because entheogens are meaning enhancers and when that whenever people hear something and whenever somebody tells them something it can be enhanced and the meaning can be multiplied by dozens of times therefore it is easy to become a victim of a cult leader for instance or a person who is taking advantage of them that's why it is very important to make sure that the person you are entrusting your psyche to is quite adequate person there is no like narcissistic nature to the character of such person or things like this so yeah things happen unfortunately this is the rotten nature of humankind let's put it this way next pillar would be data collection and research yeah this is an interesting one because whenever we're talking about psychedelic experience the stigma around the topic is still insane therefore whenever people are in the clinical trial or they are participating in a shamanic experience or in a retreat that implies consumption of entheogens it is important to make sure that the anonymity of a person is protected reason being is that if it is a matter of public knowledge it may lead to certain consequences especially when we're talking about countries where psychedelics are extremely stigmatized tabooed and can lead to a uh, sentence in the jail pretty much 
so or even threaten one's life therefore there is a need to make sure that people who are going through ceremony or treatment are protected from all sorts of potential data leaks let's put it this way next one is practitioner disclosure and this is an interesting one because it is all about the therapists or shamans or guide or coach uh, experience in the context of psychotherapy and by the way don't forget to comment on the video share like and subscribe uh, because youtube algorithms do require that for the video to become more widely spread and viewed by fellow psychonauts or other people who are interested to learn about the therapeutic potential of entheogens let's put it this way anyway going back to the practitioner's disclosure so you, we need to make sure that the person who is taking care of your psyche whenever you are in the state of expanded consciousness has the capacity to contain your experience to make it safe to make sure that you know your psyche is not going to face any difficulties once the substances leave your blood system pretty much so even though the presence of a diploma of a clinical psychologist or psychiatrist is important it is not necessarily 100 percent critical because in the cases when we're talking about underground people who are conducting various types of ceremonies with psychedelics hardly we can meet people who have relevant psychological background but what you need to make sure is whether or not person possesses at least more or less in-depth knowledge of psychedelics otherwise you just better not get in touch with such therapist or a person who never experienced in entheogens by themselves and they don't know how they work on human mind they don't know the basics of pharmacology neuroscience even or first help whenever a person is having a very difficult moment under the influence of the substances and finally patient education and this is probably what i'm doing right now educating people on the potential hazards of psychedelics or about the potential benefits even in some cases but i'm providing the knowledge and uh, whenever you are dealing with somebody who is conducting either a ceremony or a clinical trial or whatever a treatment your psychiatrist psychologist they need to tell you how psychedelics are going to affect you your psyche your mind how are they going to change your perception what are you going to be experiencing and what's going to happen with you what it's going to feel like etc so everything should be quite detailed quite simply put and conveyed appropriately so that the person understands what are the potential risks it's like whenever you're taking a drug and a medication you're looking at the list of the side effects and typically it's like massive right especially when we're talking about ssris however with psychedelics the list of the consequences or potential what's it called risks is not that big but they are there that's why people need to be informed therefore consent is required because if people don't know what they're about to experience probably it's going to work not in their favor so i'll try to wrap up this episode and make it shorter than before and try to summarize what i've told to you before so remember when people are exploring the depths of their psyche and the subconscious they can with the help of psychedelics of course they can help they can change their mind perception their worldview and even their i don't know relationship with religion let's put it this way but of course consent is required and information needs to be provided to people who are about to be patients or just those who are consuming psychedelics people need to know what it's going to feel like and there are seven elements that are critical i'm gonna read them because i don't remember them by heart acute and chronic perception change number one number two personality changes and altered metaphysical beliefs three role of physical touch ideally talk through up front next exploitation and abuse unfortunately there is potential for it then data collection and research the need to be the need for anonymity to be present due to the stigma around the topic practitioner disclosure the understanding of the 
practitioner's experience pretty much or the knowledge or the education or something related to it and finally patient education and uh, comprehensive assessment comprehension assessment meaning whether or not a person truly understands what they're about to experience so let's wrap up here and if you like this episode don't forget to like share and subscribe leave your comments and spread the knowledge further and next time i will talk to you about a conference that is happening real soon in netherlands called icpr interdisciplinary conference on psychedelic research i will be there so see you there by the way if you still need a promo I, i'm not sure if they still have it if it's valid when the video is published but reach out to me maybe there is still a promo code for 100 you shave off all right see you next time thank you for watching and until next time